Hey all here at OS Reviews, you're watching our revisited review of the Elytro Light Field Camera here in early 2018. Now this is an interesting camera that was released in 2012, making it six years old. It still has a very cutting edge and modern design, uh, so back then it had a very steep price, uh, MRSP price, of around $400 and up. Uh, but now you can find it on Amazon or eBay for under $100, making it a pretty fun gadget to play around with. So this is an interesting story. Uh, the founder of this company uh, back then was a researcher at Stanford, and now he is no longer part of the company. He is a professor at the University of California, Berkeley. And uh, this was their first generation camera. After this came out, they released a slightly more expensive model uh, that was slightly higher than a grand that was aimed at pro photographers and uh, started to compete with DSLRs. However, it also wasn't really successfully commercially, and the company has now turned to work with more kind of VR development uh, and video VR cameras. Uh, and so that is the story of the company behind this. So going back to the product itself, it's called a light field camera because you're able to adjust the focus point uh, of your shots uh, after your image has been taken. So it captures the direction of the light within one shot. So you have, uh, again, the direction of the light that might be bouncing off different objects towards the camera, away from the camera, and all that data is stored uh, onto that single image. And once you process it using the uh, application from Lytro for desktops as well as for mobile devices, you're able to then change the focus dynamically. So this type of concept has now caught on into dual lens setups on most flagship smartphones in 2017 and 18. We saw that with the HTC One M8, we see that with the, uh, again, iPhone X, and uh, so on and so forth. And having a secondary sensor captures additional depth information. Now, that's not exactly how the Lytro works. It captures all that light information using just one sensor, uh, but it also requires a very deep sensor, which is why the size of the Lytro, again, reminds you something like a tube or a chocolate bar rather than a more traditional point-and-shoot handheld. It's also only able to capture still images as opposed to stills and videos. So it comes in a few different colors from red to gray uh, to a uh, blue and a pink and in terms of specifications it has an eight times optical zoom which is very impressive uh, for a small handheld and it has a 1.52 inch capacitive touchscreen display which you can also use to directly start focusing your objects and images. And it features what's called a 40 mega ray sensor. Now that is not to be confused with megapixels. It's converted to megapixels only about two megapixels, uh, so it's by no means something that you would want to use to capture really high definition images that you can zoom in and get the most detail, uh, but it takes up a large size, like I said, because it needs to capture the direction of the light on every object uh, within one frame. It has a f2.0 aperture in addition to 8 gigs of built-in storage, and there's also a 16 gig version that was $100 more expensive. The Lytro does also feature built-in Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, which were both released through firmware updates that uh, allows it to connect to a mobile app available for iOS and Android at the time, uh, so that you could directly sync images over without the use of a desktop computer to transfer out your, your shots. Aside from the uh, camera itself inside the box, which also includes this magnetic uh, lens protector, which is quite a useful accessory, and again, it's a very elegant solution. There's also a lanyard strap, and aside from that, there's a micro USB cable for charging, a get started guide that tells you to visit their website to learn more about the services, um, and in this pocket, there's also, again, the aforementioned micro USB charging cable, uh, in addition to a few warranty guides and product information guides. So taking a look at the design of the Lytro light field camera first, again, it definitely seems like an unusual camera. Uh, the body is made out of aluminum, which gives it a considerable heft, and everything else is made out of a polycarbonate, uh, soft touch, uh, rubber material. Uh, it's uh, pretty easy to grip and hold using just one hand, and the simple dimple on the surface here acts as the shutter key for instantly taking an image. Because the camera doesn't need to focus on a particular scene, uh, because again, it's capturing all the light information and allows you to uh, focus uh, and process things afterwards, it's great for capturing instant moments, is what the lens looks like. And there's also a very interesting capacitive touch strip on the front here. You can see a little bit of uh, 
uh, indicators, and this is used for the optical zoom, where you can zoom in up to eight times. The camera turns on very quickly, just add a tap of a key, and there's almost no wait time. There's also access again to the touchscreen, which is actually pretty bright and responsive, uh, as well as easy to use. The software side of things is also very simple. Uh, it simply tells you your zoom amount after you zoom in and out, and I can swipe up as well to have access to the battery uh, amount remaining. I can take a look at the storage remaining out of eight gigs, and this is an auto zoom feature where it detects the optimal kind of distance away and starts adjusting the uh, distance from the lens automatically. Here is kind of a self timer mode. Over here I have the wireless uh, mode for connecting to the Lytro camera using Wi-Fi. If I want to look at my images, I simply swipe over to the left and from here I can go back and forth between my shots. I can add these to my favorites so that they are synced and imported to my computer first when I plug it in. Uh, and once you install the Lytro desktop app, it will automatically sync all your images over uh, once you connect it. So it's very similar to something like iTunes, so very Apple-like. Uh, once I have this image here, I can directly start playing with the focus adjustments. I should mention that the zoom set settings are also fully functional within the uh, photo gallery here, so I can zoom in and out if I want to look at more images or less. So here's a fence that I captured, and this is a good application because right now the chains are obviously in focus, but I can also tap on the background, and you can see now the background has shot into focus, and the chains are now fuzzy. Here's the Lytro desktop app. Whenever we connect the camera to the uh, computer, it will automatically start to sync images over to the library. And depending on images that you can tap on favorite using the camera, it will sync those images first. So in our library here, we have a collection of all our images sorted by time in this chronological order. I can also, of course, change the timeline if I wanted to by rating, depending on my favorites, zoom in, zoom out. So it's a pretty flexible software that uh, actually gives you quite a few tools to play around with and if I wanted to take a look at a sample image say uh, let's go with this image I can double tap on it and it will give me a larger view so if I tap on different points in the image you can see how it uh, changes the focus I can tap on the table here so the table becomes in focus and the background is blurred out so again these tools that we're seeing more and more now in smartphones uh, but in this uh, again, more original format that was designed for PCs and computers. And if I tap on play, there's actually a auto generation software. It kind of changes the focus as it pans around with the image. Looking at a different image, uh, it's a bit more apparent again when we have text or objects really close to the lens. The background is completely blurred out, but I can then tap on the background. And now the words in front you can see here has been blurred out. So you can tap on the focal points, uh, different parts of the image, and they all remain in focus pretty well. Uh, so I can shift around the perspective of the image like a moving picture. Again, here's another demonstration. You can see it shifting the perspective as the image is being panned and tilted. And this is a final view where everything is in focus all at once. Definitely very interesting. Uh, so if I go back, I can also uh, take a look on the side here. I have access to information. I can tap on info and that tells me it was captured using the Lytro camera. It's a raw image. I can also see the EV ISO shutter speed that was captured at and I can also favorite it if I wanted to and enter something like a caption uh, so I can remember it. Uh, actually there is a software element that is no longer working with Lytro, it's defunct now, which is the online sharing feature. I used to have a server dedicated for sharing these uh, live images so that anyone with uh, a link to your image without having to download the Lytro desktop app could tap on different parts of the image and see it move uh, just like you would, which was again pretty cool and one of the reasons why you could also add these captions and things for viewers. Uh, in terms of adjustment, it gives you actually quite a few options. It's very similar to pro photography software, uh, video editing tools, things like that. You have a histogram of all your colors and furthermore I can kind of change the color. I can uh, make it slightly more yellow in tint, and you can see how it shifts around in histogram, make it uh, cooler in temperature as well. Same thing with the uh, tint down below here, greener and more red, so you can really adjust these uh, to your liking. I can also change the tone, contrast, highlights, things like that can all be manually tweaked, and I can also change the virtual aperture directly on here. You can see everything in focus versus only one element in focus, and that makes everything very blurred out. Uh, depth map is also here, focus spread, and uh, also sharpening amounts, noise reduction. So all these tools, it actually works very well. Uh, so Lytro Desktop definitely is a very complete software package for the camera. The presentation, it will begin an automatic slideshow in here 
and uh, you can end the slideshow. You can go to full screen and also change the view mode so that's 2D uh, or 3D depending on the type of viewer or audience that you're sharing it to. So the optical zoom is also quite effective. It almost becomes like a binocular. You can tell I'm look taking these images from the rooftop of the building. This is what the shot naturally looks like but as I start playing around with the zoom you can see I can make out individual people. This is not even going all the way up. I can also make out people from the other side of the road as you can see here uh, which is technically standing in this position in the zoomed out photo. So it's actually very effective if you're capturing, let's say, images in a stadium, for sports, things like that. You can tell how, especially in outdoor environments with plenty of light, the images actually look uh, fairly impressive, especially in terms of the color accuracy, the saturation, and the punchiness that I can bring. I can tap on the slow on the snow on the ground. You can see the iciness uh, really pop up in detail. Here's another image where we get this really rich depth of field like on a DSLR with the snow being really nice and detailed but the background is completely blurred out. And here are two shots I thought were really interesting. This is uh, the window on a door that has these very small kind of metal lines running through it for security. So it gives you uh, again a sense of what that looks like, but now the background is really blurred out. Finally, I can tap on the background and the lines by the window are now uh, almost disappeared. And I can also tap on this chain link fence. So the fence is now uh, in focus on multiple parts, as you can see there or I can tap on the stadium in the background and now the chain link fence is blurred out. It definitely isn't something that you'll be using for every single shot, but regardless, even for regular shots, uh, especially ones if you want to use the optical zoom, it still turns out looking, uh, again, fairly impressive. So that's Lytro, the light field camera, and in many ways, the camera of the future that sadly failed commercially. Uh, but in many ways, I still find it to be an intriguing project and also something if you can find it online for say 60 or 70 bucks, I would consider picking up because it's so easy to shoot with and it's such a fun novelty camera to use. Its futuristic design still holds up today and because of the compact form factor, I find it more satisfying and convenient to snap images on the fly than with a traditional smartphone. Uh, and because of this, it sparked my curiosity in photography and I was more eager than usual to take images everywhere I went uh, just with this dedicated camera. So there's definitely more freedom, that you aren't tied down with a uh, you know, smartphone, a computer in your hand where you'll always be checking Instagram or Facebook or Twitter, uh, and instead you are just left with a camera for taking images first and foremost. Another reason why I really liked the Lytro, surprisingly, was for the optical zoom. The fact that it has this really nice depth means that it has that large 8x optical zoom, which you simply don't get on any smartphone uh, or even on most point-and-shoot digital cameras. So it'll only give you three or four times at most. And that means you can get really up close to objects so you can use it as a uh, you know, binocular of sorts. Uh, you can zoom in into smaller animals, you can zoom into trees and leaves and details uh, that the naked eye just can't see. Again, it adds to the overall exploration uh, of, of taking creative images. And the fact that you can creatively reprocess the images afterwards is quite fun. This is by no means your primary camera that you should be using for taking super high definition shots because again, it lacks a lot of detail, it lack, lacks a lot of uh, resolution because it's only technically too two megapixels. Uh, but nonetheless, it's really fun to play around with if you're going on vacation, if you want to capture shots within a city, somewhere busy where moments uh, can happen right in front of you, and you want to document that in this particular format, then the Lytro is actually still a very cool camera today.